Coming up on DTNS, you've been saying a PlayStation button wrong. Or have you? Cloudflare admits it was selling services to bad people. And California is close to passing a law to make Uber drivers full employees. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, September 11th, 2019. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. In beautiful Salt Lake City, I'm Scott Johnson. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Hey, you know what? A uh, special happy birthday to Jason Howell, uh, producer of Buzz Out Loud, Tech News Today, sometimes guest on Daily Tech News Show. Uh, it's his birthday today. And, happy uh, birthday, Jason Howell. Yeah. yeah. Happy birthday, Jason. We were just talking about uh, buying things online and what we thought of the Apple announcement yesterday and all kinds of good stuff on Good Day Internet. That's the wider show that encapsulates Daily Tech News Show. You can get that by becoming a member at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Uber laid off 435 people in engineering and product roles, which is about 8% of those departments. This follows a layoff of 400 people from its marketing department back in July. Uber employs around 27,000 full-time folks. Uber also lifted a hiring freeze that was put into place last month, and the company lost $5 billion in Q2, although a large portion of that loss was related to one-time IPO expenses. Real, real quick clarification, that 27,000 doesn't include drivers at all that's right? right no good clarification it right. does not at least not yet <laughs> that's a lot of people uh yeah not yet maybe in california soon all right hey mozilla is launching its firefox private network vpn service to u.s desktop users of firefox as part of the revived firefox test pilot program firefox private network is an extension that encrypts a connection to analyze it and or to, excuse me anonymize it and to prevent sniffing cloud uh cloudfare provides the proxy servers to mozilla the service is free during this beta. The Libra Association said it plans to apply to become a licensed payments system in Switzerland, where it is headquartered. The Swiss financial market supervisor Finma said Libra appears to be more than just a global payment system and likely would be subject to liquidity and capital allocations for risk to management of reserves. Remember, there's a basket of currencies that Libra uses as a reserve to back its uh, cryptocurrency that it's developing. Libra told Reuters that Finma's guidance, quote, now define what the Libra ecosystem is and what it is not. Bloomberg reports three merchants that say several attorneys and at least one economist have been conducting interviews with people who sell goods on Amazon as part of a U.S. FTC investigation. This follows an August 2nd report that John Bumstead of Minnesota was interviewed by FTC lawyers about the impact of Amazon and Apple's deal on his refurbished Mac business. Yeah, so it's wider than just the Apple stuff. Looks like they're looking into all, all parts of it, according to these sources. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about... Uh, some of those under the under the radar Apple announcements, they, they sometimes just release some things in press releases like they did with the operating system release dates that we mentioned yesterday. Scott, you've got another one here. Sure. This is less boring on stage, but uh, interesting to consumers, I think. Apple updated Apple Care Plus with a new monthly subscription offering. Previously, the extended warranty covered two or three years, which could pay. Uh, you, you'd pay that all at once when you'd pick up your hardware or go buy it or get it online. Uh, or you could do it in monthly installments. That's how it always worked then. The change now offers the option to pay monthly until canceled. The user could cancel the subscription under certain terms, or Apple could cancel within 30 days' notice if it no longer can service the items uh, or the, you know get parts for the thing that's breaking for you. This potentially means Apple Care could last longer than the usual two or three years. Uh, how do we feel so, about a new uh, subscription in our lives, a service one? If you're trying to wrap your head around this, say the Apple Watch, you normally get it for Apple Care for two years, period. Right. You can pay it in installments, you can pay it all at once, but it's two years. This seems to imply that it could last longer than two years because they're saying you pay monthly until, it, until you cancel. Yeah. Although... I suppose Apple could just decide there are no longer parts to service it at the end of two years. I will have to wait and see. I'm hoping that's not the case. Yeah, sort of 11th hour kind of stuff. It reminds me of my current uh, lease term <laughs> for my apartment. You know, <laughs> my landlord has 30 days to be like, you're out of here, Sarah. But, but uh, at the same time, uh, having just gone through a big MacBook Pro, macbook pro uh display fix that was 650 dollars it was a lot of money because it was out of warranty and it was something that you know was that uh, apple wasn't gonna cover for me even though it's a known issue but that is beside the point <laughs> uh I, you know i after 
you know, I did the math and I was like, okay, well, this sort of Apple insurance would have saved me money in the long term had this had been available to me beforehand, which it wasn't. But at the same time, it's kind of like the way I feel about Creative Cloud. You know, I'm paying every month for Premiere and Photoshop. Uh, it's it's going to over the course of you know several years be more money than it would have been to outright just buy the the product in the first place which is how we used to do things but we've all gotten so used to subscription models yeah i i uh i wonder if there isn't a future where if you're invested enough across the board i guess if you're a business and maybe they already have some of this and i don't know but paying a monthly fee that just sort of covered all of the stuff branded under that name whether it's apple or whoever microsoft whoever wants to do it that seems like a thing I wouldn't mind as a con as a consumer or a kind of a prosumer of products. That seems like that might be a a way to deal. Yeah, I don't think this this works that way though. I think it you have to uh, tell it what you're covering and then the price varies sure. based on that. But yeah, um, I I'm usually one who thinks that these things don't exist to uh, protect you so much as make the company money. So I, I'm very skeptical. Apple does have one of the better terms where they will actually replace things and fix things. Some of these warranties try to kind of nickel and dime you on that stuff, even when the, when it's covered. But uh, interesting to see that with a sort of a no end. I wonder if being in cahoots with Goldman Sachs on the credit card uh, provided them any insight and in, and in, in the math behind offering this. Hmm. Google's Chrome 77 is rolling out to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android this week. One new feature lets you right-click on a link where you can choose to send the link to another device where you use Chrome. So, in other words, not just opening the same page as you have open, but, like, I can send the link from Windows to my Android phone, and when I go open Chrome on my Android phone, it'll be right there. Now, the feature has shown up in Windows, Android, and iOS, though in iOS, you have to have Chrome open to see the prompt to accept the shared link. So it's a little jankier there. Uh, and it hasn't showed up on macOS desktop yet, uh, but it will supposedly. Chrome 77 also has a new site loading indicator in the tab that uses the site's fave icon. So it's a little ob more obvious when a site's still loading. And yeah, before the show, I, w I, I was like, this sounds like a great feature. Was this not already a feature? And Tom, you clarified, well, for some people, they're like, don't, don't I already have the capability to do this? But no, it, it's yeah. uh, being able to share the link is actually a step forward. Or Firefox does it, if you were thinking of that, maybe. I don't, I don't know if uh, they, they've no, had I'm that. A Chrome, I'm a Chrome user across all mm -hmm. devices currently, so yeah. I, there is a, isn't, okay, I may be totally wrong here, and I hope I am, so someone will correct me. But it seems like I, when I've jumped around with different browsers on my phone, including Chrome and Firefox, that the Apple link share stuff still kind of works. So you get that kind of Mac icon that pops up and goes, oh, you've got something happening over here on this other device. Do you want to open it here? And I swear I've done that. Yeah, that's an Apple thing, though. You can't do that with your Android phone. I think that's what we're thinking of is what I'm saying. I oh, yeah, that's maybe the that's the experience it. Yeah. I had that, that could be. makes me think I've done it and that I actually haven't done it's it. It's not exactly the same thing, but, yeah, right. that could be what you're thinking of. Right. Oh. Scott, right. I have potentially good news or bad news for you. I'll okay. let you tell me what it is. PlayStation right. gamers, count yourself among them, who have been calling the console's X button the X button are in for a surprise because Sony says this is actually called the cross button. In fact, on Twitter, Sony's official account said, quote, if cross is called X, and then they said in parentheses, it's not, then what are you calling circle? And that referred to the fact that a lot of gamers call the O button the circle button. Mm, yeah, this is a thing that didn't, uh, some people are downright upset about it. I mean, well, uh, so Sony did a poll where they said, what do you call it? Wink, wink. Right. Well, guess what? You're wrong. Yeah. It's almost like they brought this on themselves, but it's yeah, also, they I no, mean, they did. It's a, it's a, it's a PR thing. It totally. is a, definitely a PR thing, but here's the thing. Like, it's so <laughs> weird to get wrapped up in a pedantic thing that has been in place for 20 plus years. We have been calling it the X button since the day in 96 that I went home with my brand new PlayStation one. And then return it a week later because the fan was bad. But anyway, that's not part of the story. <laughs> uh, we called it an X button then. I've heard Sony in presentations at E3 and other events say the X button as they're describing what's happening in games and so on. So I know they know it. So this is just a way of getting everybody to talk about their PlayStation, I guess. And I yeah. don't know that it's the best way to do that. It seems like a lot of negative cloud over this thing. Or Does or it make you cross? No, it makes me X. <laughs> 
I'm all X'd out over it. <laughs> kind of X'd. Well, X'd I, when you think of it, you're like, okay, of course, because of naming conventions of competitors, sure. You'd say, oh, yeah, call it a cross rather than an X. But as you point out, Scott, Sony itself hasn't done this for many years now. So it's yeah. a little silly. It's super silly. And it's not It's not so much that we, we're completely adverse to change. If they came out and said it's really important you call it the the cross button and for now all games will just refer to it as that and you'll see it in all of our documentation if they were going to do that all right fine we get used to it but why it's you're part of the <laughs> of the popular culture in a way that few companies are and certainly in gaming that's a that's a thing that sticks forever we already know it for what it is it was already weird to use symbols and not a b c a b x and y like everybody else was doing and has continued to double down on this weird symbol thing the only part of it that made sense to us was X and occasionally O instead of circle. So don't take that from us. Let us have this like semblance right. of like normal conversation about. We an all X know. Yeah. It's, this, it's the 10 button. Yeah. And I'm never going <laughs> to tell Nick. He's never going to go, Dad, I can't get out of this level. Well, hit the cross button first. Hit the, hit, hit the, the yeah, hit the 10 button. Well, yeah. and also, I mean, I know this is nitpicky, but when I see X, that often means like abort. <laughs> right like it doesn't mean cross to me right. so it's like you ha you ha you should have kind of planted the seed about the fact that you wanted us to all call this a long time ago yeah and other controllers have x it's all just weird so i don't know why they did it tom's right it's pr it's weird pr though let's talk about something more serious i agree in documents related to its plans to issue issue public stock cloudfare disclosed potential economic and trade sanctions violations and such to the U.S. Tre uh, Treasury Department. The filing says the disclosure was made to the Treasury in May. The filing also says that customers that have been designated by the U.S. as terrorists and narcotics traffickers or are affiliated with governments who are currently subject to comprehensive U.S. sanctions used and paid for cloud fare services. Cloudfare says it's adding additional controls and screening to remediate the problem and uh, or remedy rather, no, remediate. Uh, Cloudfare also made disclosures over potential export control violations to the Commerce Department and Census Bureau. So, I mean, really, this is Cloudflare uh, filing its paperwork, not covering things up, saying, hey, you know, we did our due diligence. We looked in the background. It looks like some bad people may have taken advantage of our services, uh, and we're, we're taking measures to try to stop that from happening in the future. But this is no different than what happens on Facebook and YouTube, in my opinion, where you have an automatic system for signing up for something, and it works at a scale that is larger than humans can review. And that is a problem. And, you know, I I don't think there's a moral judgment to be laid on Cloudflare here other than to say, like, well, if in this world where technology works at that scale, this is something that is going to happen. And, yes, we need to figure out how to make it not happen. Uh, but it's easier said than done. And, uh, and, and it's interesting to me that you don't, you don't see a bunch of outrage about Cloudflare out there, uh, that, that you might have, if this was a Facebook or a Google doing it, because Cloudflare has been very good about protecting your data and being a good steward, or at least appearing to be so in the past. Yeah. Isn't it also good that they, uh, they benefit from being on the tail end of these other stories like we had one last hmm. day even it feels like every week there's at least two or three of these because outrage so, exhaustion partly that but also they can come in on the back end and go well in spite of, they're not saying this but despite all of those things we're doing this the right way we believe here is our due diligence here is our here is our transparency here's how we're trying to do this isn't that better than what you've seen before? Without having well, to I mean, these are that. just these are they're not doing press announcements about this they're not out there saying look at what we're doing these yeah, are just they filings. have to file this yeah yeah yeah, but even then, like it's just a better look for them that they weren't the first to get <laughs> to get hit with like, hey, wait a minute, there might be potential terrorists using your common systems. I mean, that's that's true of any online service at all. Yeah. Like that's not true. specific to Cloudflare. That's true. Yeah, I think this is less of a like, look at what Cloudflare did right, and more of a this is our new normal. Yeah, or right or wrong, either one. Yeah. Uh, developer Steve Trouton Smith, he of the finding evidence of future products and developers things fame, posted a screenshot of a README file from the iOS 13 Gold Master that describes how employees can run stereo augmented reality apps on an iPhone when you don't have access to Apple's headset. What headset is that? 
uh, Steve Trouton Smith asked as he read this readme, uh, refers to something codenamed Garta. Uh, Garta has also been reported in leaks by 9to5Mac and Mac rumors as a codename for an AR headset. Uh, Garta seems to be a stereoscopic AR headset based on the content of the readme. iOS 13 code also has a game controller framework gamepad profile that Trouton Smith describes as for a device meant to be used while using stereo augmented reality apps. The controller profile has a clicky trackpad, a trigger button, and a system button, which Trouton Smith thinks might be a home button. Uh, but yeah, it looks like, at least internally, Apple has been testing an augmented reality headset of some sort and a controller to go with it. And this is something that we've been, you know, hearing rumors about for some time, but this is our, our, our best evidence that this is a real thing that is in testing. Yeah, not only that, but, you know, everybody, I was, we were talking pre-show about how it feels like people are on eggshells sometimes with Apple saying, well, when are you going to show your hand in the VR stuff that we know you're at least researching or working on? That's what they do. They wait for everybody else to put products out and then they come out and say, well, here's how we think we're doing it right. And they just haven't really done much, even though there have been weird patents floating around and strange drawings and now this. But I think this leads me to believe anyway that what we'll see is a company continue to push AR. Uh, they've had a lot of that happening with the phone and with their iOS devices. Why not Apple to be the one that comes out with, a, at the very least, an a AR solution, if not some sort of mixed reality headset and maybe, maybe sooner than we think. Or this could be like any other thing, like Apple cars where you just never see anything. So I'm not holding my breath, but I'm excited yeah. to hear that there's something. Well, Sean Hollister over at The Verge uh, suggests that this could be like a cardboard style device, something you put your iPhone in. Uh, if you if you read a, the, the readme in a certain way, it could work that way, which might be just a test device. Uh, he doesn't think, and I agree with him, that Apple would ever release a cardboard style augmented reality device for an iPhone. Uh, so we may be a little farther down the road than we think. Um, but if you're like, well, wait, I already knew Apple was making an augmented reality device because I saw all those headlines. Well, there's been a lot of people leaking things and speculating. This is solid evidence. It's reference to the headset in a readme file released to public developers. So this is yeah. different than somebody said or somebody told me or I think I heard or I saw a leak. Like this is this is actual evidence. We, we've sort of lost the ability to distinguish those things over the years. So I, I feel it's important to point that out. Hey, folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to DailyTechHeadlines.com. All right, back. The California State Senate passed Bill AB5. That bill, if it becomes law, it's not law yet, would make some contractors into non-contract employees. You'll see people refer to it as full-time, but they could be part-time employees that are, that are assigned benefits. The point is they get benefits. They Contractors don't get benefits. Uh, if you're a full employee, a non-contract employee, they have to give you a certain amount of benefits. The bill would affect companies like Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Postmates, even interpreters and translators, possibly some taxi companies who, who uh, hire people to drive as contractors. Under the proposed law, to be considered a contractor, a worker in California must meet the ABC test. This was laid out in a court case last year and is now being kind of beefed up and turned into law. So the ABC case is you are free from control of the hiring company. The hiring company doesn't tell you how to do your job. They just hire you to do a thing. And I, 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 That's how if you're get, a contractor. Yeah, this is yeah. how you qualify as a contractor. Two, you have to work outside the company's main business. If the company is a trucker, which is what the, the court case was about, uh, and you drive a truck, it's going to be harder to prove that you work outside the company's main business. And the third thing you need to do to prove you're an independent contractor is have an independent business beyond the contracted job. So you can't be like, oh, no, my only source of income is this contracted job. Then the legislation is going to say, well, then you're not a contractor. AB5 specifically exempts some categories, though. So freelance writers are exempt, real estate agents, lawyers, among others. These non-contract employees in California, if they're found to be not contractors, must be paid a minimum wage, receive overtime, sick leave, family leave, and contribute to Social Security and Medicare. And if they're using their own vehicles, like with Uber and Lyft, then they'd be required to be reimbursed for mileage if they're using their own car for company business. Also, don't forget that companies with employees have to pay payroll tax for employees 
on top of the money taken out for wages. A lot of people don't realize that. There's the withholding that comes out of your payroll, but then the company has to pay a tax just for employing you on top of that. Why? Uber and Lyft, uh, that's called a payroll tax. But why? Because the <laughs> government wants to have more money. So I'm just, they... as somebody who has never paid this tax, I'm like, that doesn't sound like something I'd want to do. No, but uh, I pay this tax because I employ yeah, you. So exactly. I, yeah. As a, as a privilege of employing Roger and Sarah, I pay the payroll tax. All right. Uber and Lyft say they plan to take a referendum to California voters to create a new non employee classification for drivers next year. That would be their, their way of fighting back on this. Uh, the bill now goes back to the state assembly uh, for kind of a reconciliation. They have to approve some amendments that the Senate put on it. Uh, it's expected to pass there. And after that, it would go to the governor who is in full support of this. So he was expected to sign it. And if passed, it'll go into effect on January 1st. Oh, man, so many things to think about with this. And I know it's only California, but I work with so many Californians that I have a lot of questions about how this might affect me. It does sound, though, like, for example, if somebody hires me uh, and I'll speak just because I only know what I could do, but somebody hires me and says, hey, we're doing this children's book. We need an illustrator. We'd like you to do it. Probably going to be okay. Like that's still a, under these definitions and these changes, it's still a thing. You're, the writer is pulling in an artist to do a thing, and then the writer's done, and that guy goes away, contract complete, right? What they're trying to kill are people who may want to keep me around to do illustrations for something every month, still calling me a contractor, but depriving me of whatever rights they think they're depriving me of. I think that's how I have it in my head. And people take advantage of it, right? Like, yeah, I mean, this is this is definitely targeted at an industry, and that never has unintended side effects, does it? No. Yeah, I mean, this whole story, you know, you keep hearing the term gig economy, gig economy workers. You see, so you go like, oh, Uber and Lyft drivers, or you know, somebody who's working for Postmates, or you know, somebody who's working for, uh, you know, it's 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 that certain sector of workers which. Sometimes it's full time. It's often not full time. So companies that are of a large scale, what did we say earlier in the show that Uber has like 27,000 full time employees, none of which are drivers? Big company. Uh, and in many cases, this is the bread and butter of somebody who is working for that company. So that I see that it makes a lot of sense. But, you know, Tom, you used uh, the DTNS team as an example, and there are a lot of uh, small private companies who will be affected by this and not necessarily in good ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it makes uh, it hard for me or Scott if he's using somebody that lives here in California, like when I co-host Current Geek with him, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes it harder to decide, well, wait a minute, do you fall under this law? I mean, you're not a freelance writer, so you're not exempt there. Um, but you, like, for me, it's easy to say, like, oh, I have my own business. I had to, I had to actually fight this out with a company that had hired me to do something and wanted to make me an employee and take out uh, Medicare and Social Security and all that. And I was like, wait, 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 you're hiring my company. Uh, you're mm. not hiring me. And eventually what they did is they're like, oh, you should be a vendor, not a contractor. And they they switched it all up and it's fine. But it is causing a lot of consternation outside of this. And I guess what makes it a tech story is a lot of non-malicious uh, technology innovation happens because of the freedom to be like, oh yeah, let me just hire somebody to do that for, for a minute. That doesn't require a lot of paperwork and consternation. And at least in California, this is going to add a few layers to that, or at least put people at risk if they're like, well, as long as nobody complains, I guess it's fine. But what if somebody does complain down the road, right? It just, just adds a little uncertainty in there. Yeah, I hope uh, I hope it doesn't have, I mean, here's what, here's what usually happens with these kinds of changes and also existing laws. People find loopholes. As you were describing this, I was thinking about, well, let's see, if, is Tom really a contractor when I do current geek payouts? <laughs> Probably not. Like, I No, I'm a vendor. A you You're hiring some brilliant LLC uh, to provide a guest for your show. Exactly. See, there's always this stuff. I learned this. If I've learned anything from my magical accountant, and one day it may get him in trouble, I don't know, but he has this way of finding all the ways around. It's like, oh, well, for that, you just say this. For that, you just do this. You show this. It's not like lying or deceit. It's just you yeah. change no, the way the that thing, you right? lay it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So my like if 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 there is somebody like Sarah, for instance, who's like, oh no, I tell her, <laughs> I, I don't tell her what to do. No one tells Sarah what to do. But you know, I I'm like, you have to be here <laughs> I mean, every you try, day, but right? It just doesn't work. If, uh, and 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 I want you, I want you to write up some stuff that and and 
and you're doing 40 hours a week work, then you're a full-time person. And I get that. And this is this is trying to make sure the companies aren't abusing this. So I'm not saying I'm even against this law, but it does change the way a lot of other things are going to happen. I know they they carved out lawyers and real estate agents because they knew those would be screaming the biggest. Freelance writers too, because the media uh, uses that a lot. So it, it'll be interesting. Yeah. Also, I'm glad uh, I'm glad that they're not worried about how poorly people who are on their own sole proprietorships treat themselves. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> there's no way I am being fair to myself. I get crappy <laughs> vacation time. My pay is not that great if you look at hours spent versus what the totals are. Like, I am a terrible example of mismanagement of my employee if I counted. I'm really glad I don't, and I hope I never do. <laughs> well, I hope you never do either. Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I guess we didn't talk enough this uh, about like the actual what this does for writers, but it could reduce the number of writers that these companies employ. Uh, on the other hand, it's definitely going to reduce the exploitation of these writers uh, who have been complaining more and more that the deal gets worse all the time, that the more they work, they're not making that much more money uh, as the fares change. So it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. Yeah. yeah, I mean, freelance writing, especially, it's like free from control of the hiring company, working outside the company's main business. Everybody does that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, have an independent business beyond the contracted job. Everybody does that, you know, unless things are going badly. So, yeah, a lot of gray areas here still. Well, but the but freelance writers are exempted. Which so they don't, have, they don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Right. But anybody who falls under that same moniker is, you know... It, I think that there are a lot of companies who will be like, well, are we really controlling you? And the, the freelance person might say, well, I think you are. See, that's my point. It becomes these start thinking of these loopholes and like, oh, well, if you define it that way, like that's why this stuff's so hard to regulate. It's yeah, it is. Weird. What isn't hard to regulate are wonderful subredditors. You can submit stories and vote on others at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. We use those stories to help bolster our show. So thank you in advance. We also have a Facebook group. Join it if you haven't already. Facebook.com slash groups slash dailytechnewsshow. Let's check out the mailbag. Let's do it. Ted wrote in about using Vivaldi as his main browser for over a year. And Ted says he has some really good thoughts. Uh, he says all the features of Chrome, but none of the Google. Most of the web apps that I use are optimized for Chrome. And since Vivaldi uses the Chromium rendering engine, it works just as well. Vivaldi can also use any extension in the Chrome app store so you can get all your favorite customizations. You can also sync your personal data outside of the Google Cloud. If you prefer not to have Google holding the keys to your whole digital life, Vivaldi's cloud services are free and privacy centered. Ted also says web panels are a little expandable, uh, are a little expandable windows uh, along the side of the browser, perfect to show in an online to-do list or a notes app or any other site that you want to have handy, but also hidden. Uh, and then Ted says, cool customizations in the browser interface itself if you wish your tabs or address bar or windows looked and worked a little differently. I really like how the tab bar, bar will match the color of whatever site you visit. I also like the ability to mosaic multiple browser tabs so I can interact with them at the same time. Finally, Ted says, built-in screenshot and nice native developer tools as well. Now, I mentioned yesterday we had an email from Allison Sheridan uh, that we didn't get to read while Allison was on the show, but uh, she says, I'm sure there are people who just don't like change, so don't want Microsoft to do, but that's not it for her. She's a Wonderlist fan. As Microsoft has been working on to do, Allison writes, I've jumped in and back out to test functionality. Earlier versions were missing a most critical feature, the ability to share a list with someone. The next big thing missing was the ability to organize lists into folders. Now, I tested folders when it came out last month and thought they finally had it ready for prime time, but the painstaking organization I created didn't go across to my other devices. Eventually that worked too, but then things started to disappear from my lists and lists moved back out of folders. I think Microsoft will get there and I'll keep trying to move over, but as of a month ago, it wasn't even reliable. So if there may be wonderless people like Allison who are like, yeah, I'd move, but it just doesn't work yet. So yeah, I I'm, I find myself in the same boat. I did I don't know if I told you guys this. I moved completely over to OneDrive uh, and away from mm -hmm. Dropbox, and I've been thrilled with it. It's been great. Zero problems. Lightweight. No weird restrictions. None of the weird newness of all the cranky or the crazy stuff Dropbox was trying to do. Uh, <laughs> I'm not anti Dropbox. Good power to everybody. But for whatever reason, I feel like OneDrive stepped in nicely and said, "Oh, you liked all those simple features. Well, here they are." 
Well, thanks to Ted, thanks to Ellison Sheridan, and thanks to everybody who contributes to our mailbag. We love your feedback. Keep it coming. Also, thanks to Scott Johnson for being with us today. Scott, let folks know where they can keep up with your work. Uh, head on over to frogpants.com. There are many shows that you can get. There are also multiple kinds of cool things like artwork and other projects, video projects, things that are going on all the time over at frogpants.com. And uh, as always, if you'd like to talk to me on the regular, you can find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Scott Johnson. As I keep mentioning, uh, we are changing our rewards, some of which uh, have been around for five years uh, for the first time. And we have a proposal up uh, that we want you to look over and let us know if you can't live with anything in it. We've gotten some great feedback, great ideas. So probably this Friday, uh, we'll address those ideas and incorporate some. And if we don't, uh, kind of explain why we're not doing it at this point. But you can find the current proposal at dailytechnewsshow.com slash Patreon. I mentioned we love mailbag entries, and our email address to send those mailbags to is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We're live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. at Eastern, that's 2030 UTC, and you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with Justin Robert Young. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>